big woods, you can't take two steps and look around like you read these magazines and you know if you're in woodlots and stuff where there's plenty of deer and stuff, you can do that and it's probably successful. You're trying to spot a deer first or something. But you can walk through a lot of big woods before you even get to where there's any deer. So what I do is I move quick until and I just read the sign. So I might be all day long, and I try to do it my day if I'm going to still hunt a piece of woods. And again, it's scouting, so I might just pick a piece of woods I've never been to, or maybe haven't been there for 10 or 15 years. And I usually will do it in a great big circle for the day, cover a mountain or two in that circle. But that's that's what I do. So when I get in the woods, I just start going like a I'm not necessarily, I mean, I try to be as quiet as I can, but I'm not worried about it not snapping one stick or anything like that. Because until you get around some deer, you guys want, you can, you got seats there. Until you get around deer, it really doesn't make that much difference. So if you're spending a lot of time trying to avoid every little stick in the woods, you're never going to get far enough maybe to get into some deer. Now, you might be lucky and step into the woods and there's all kinds of deer sign right off usually not the case, but it could be, especially them bigger bucks, they're usually back in somewhere. So that's what I do, I just kind of make a big circular pattern, and what am I looking for? Buck sign, right? I take into account the does, because the thing, the, hunting from, from day one in our season back in Maine, because we have a long season, basically the month of November, there's different places where you're more likely to see the bucks as the season progresses. And the first the first week, first week of November, usually they're not moving that much. And you gotta go to where they they got their little hideouts. And those hideouts ain't just one spot, because one buck as he travels his territory, especially them big old ones, it I always figured it took them three to four days to make their circuit, right? So obviously they're not in the same place every day, but they have places they like to be in that. So you're trying to find that. But early, a lot of those big bucks, they're reclusive, and when the leaves fall off the trees is when they really get back to their fall place. In the summer, they might be hanging around a clear cut or something because it's thick with the leaves. But when them leaves fall off the trees and by mid-October, they're going out of there. They're getting back into their little hidey holes or whatever. So that's where you've got to you got to go. And usually, back in my areas, mountains and stuff, I'm either going up in the mountains or down in the swamps because that's your cover, right? Green growth. Usually, that's what they're looking. You know, they hang on the edges of that or whatever. I like it high myself. I like to get up in the mountains, and you, usually, you get back in those. Mountains, the higher ones, and you don't have to go to the top of the mountain. You just got to get back in there somewhere. And it, them bucks might stay a couple days in one spot in there, and they don't come down out to the cuts to check the does that first week that much. So you might you might land on one that's just been around it. You're going to move quickly to find the sign, and it's going to be scrapes, rubs, and the rubs will be mostly signposts, travel corridors. And you hunt the sign, and I've said it before in my seminars here. In the big woods, if a buck's got 10, pick a number, 10 square miles, he uses 20, whatever it is, he really only uses about 10% of it, I think. So you want to hunt where in that 10%? You don't. Most people, to tell you the truth, hunt the 90% because guess what? It's an open hardwood ridge, it's nice going, easy place to walk. That's where everybody wants to walk, right? Hunter's going to go the easy place. Well, that ain't where the bucks go, right? They're traveling the, the, around the edges where the thick stuff meets, corridors, and they get to this signpost along the way. So you want to spend, my rule is you want to spend 90% of your time in 10% of the woods, right? Spend 10% of your time in the 90% because just face it, you got to get through those places. So if I'm out in the open hardwood ridges, I'm just 
stomping along, you know, because I'm not going to probably find a signpost out there somewhere in the open. There might be one along a little spring seat. So I got to get through that, get to the next place. If I walk over to that scrape, I could see a rub, and I'm like, he's living here, right? So this is when you go one step at a time, right? When you get into that real good buck sign, that's when you take your time. Now, I get into places like that, and I just, I'm trying to look at everything, you know, and because it could be anywhere. Could, the buck could be handy, and this one actually was, because he went down in there. I knew he'd been living there quite a bit, and I saw so much sign, I go, it was about 10, I said, I'm going to have a sandwich here. And uh, I sat down, took a bite, blew my grunt call a couple times, started eating a sandwich, blew it a couple more times. I didn't get halfway through my sandwich and I heard crick crack behind me. I was in a, you see it's kind of green and a little swampy down in there. I threw my sandwich down, I, I stood up, and as soon as I turned around, I could see him coming down through there. He'd never probably seen a human being. I mean, I was way back in. And he came right down looking, because I was a buck in his territory, right? And that's it. He just found the sign, and I did, you know, I grunted, and he came in. I mean, you can use all these different tactics, but the point is, when you get into the buck sign is where you're going to find your bucks, right? Yes, you might see one out in the open hardwood sometime, <laughs> traveling through someday, but it's going to be a lot lower percentage. You get down in these edges of the green and around, like this was probably a <coughs> hundred yards from a uh, hardwood ridge. It came down off the hardwood ridge and it dropped into this lower ground where it starts to get wet. And that's where you find your brown ash for your signpost. So that's it. Just uh, hunt like that.